Level zero, you're standing on solid ground. You assume it's safe, but beneath your feet, the earth is always shifting. Most of the time, it's subtle, imperceptible, just tectonic plates gliding past one another like slow-moving glaciers. But sometimes, the stress builds. And when it breaks, everything moves. Level zero isn't about destruction. It's about potential. The quiet before the fault line roars. Most of the planet lies far from tectonic boundaries. These areas still feel earthquakes, just rarely and weakly. Seismic waves ripple out from distant epicenters. You might feel a chandelier sway, a tremor underfoot, but no devastation. The damage, almost none. The risk, low. But even here, surprise isn't impossible. In 1811 and 1812, a series of magnitude 7 plus earthquakes struck Missouri, USA, thousands of kilometers from the nearest plate boundary. Church bells rang in Boston. The Mississippi River flowed backwards. Even stable zones hold buried faults, dormant but not dead. Small towns in Central Asia, the US Midwest, and Eastern Europe often sit atop ancient rift zones, forgotten faults that can still produce rare, powerful shocks. Level 1. Now we move to the margins, regions near, but not on, active tectonic edges. You're in southern Spain, or maybe eastern Turkey. You're close to the action. Faults crisscross beneath cities. Most tremors stay below magnitude 5, harmless, even unnoticed. But when conditions align, when shallow quakes rupture near urban centers, destruction can be sudden. Think Izmir in 2020 or L'Aquila in 2009. Magnitude mid-6 quakes, dozens dead. Buildings collapsed, lives changed. These aren't mega earthquakes, but they strike without warning and their impact is amplified by old infrastructure and poor preparedness. Damage ranges from cracked walls to pancaked apartments. Ground liquefaction can turn solid earth into sludge. And the biggest risk? Complacency. People underestimate zones like these. They're not ring of fire hotspots. They're in between, but they can still kill. Governments often ignore retrofitting policies until disaster strikes, leaving cities vulnerable even to moderate quakes. In many moderate risk zones, early warning systems are limited or absent, adding precious seconds of lost response time. Level 2. Welcome to the subduction zones. Here the real monsters sleep. You're in southern Chile, or off the coast of Sumatra. One tectonic plate plunges beneath another, grinding, sticking, building pressure. These regions produce Earth's most powerful earthquakes. But we're not at the top yet. At level 2, we focus on zones with historical megaquakes, just not recent ones. Chile's Valdivia quake in 1960, a magnitude 9.5, is the most powerful ever recorded. It sent a tsunami across the Pacific. Entire villages were erased. The quake permanently reshaped the coast. In Alaska, the 1964 Good Friday earthquake, M9.2, tore through Anchorage, lifted seabeds, and unleashed deadly landslides. These aren't annual events, they occur every few centuries, but when they do, the devastation spans continents. And yet, these zones are sparsely populated, that's the only grace. But cities are growing, infrastructure is spreading into danger. The deeper the subduction, the more violent the release. And history shows, the more time passes, the worse it gets. GPS data shows Chile's coast rising a few millimeters per year, a quiet reminder that tension is building once again. Level 3. Now we hit the present. Japan, Indonesia, Peru, Turkey. Places where the land moves frequently and people have adapted to it, or tried to. At level 3, megaquakes are possible, and recent. These are not dormant faults, they are alive. Japan's 2011 Tohoku quake, magnitude 9.0. A vertical uplift of the seafloor by several meters. A tsunami swallowed entire towns, over 18,000 dead. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant melted down. In 2004, off the coast of Sumatra, another M9.1 quake triggered a tsunami that killed 230,000 people across 14 countries. And these zones are still dangerous. The faults didn't release all their energy. The Pacific Plate continues to grind beneath Japan. The Sunda Megathrust remains locked in places. In these zones, preparedness is high, but so is exposure. Even with early warning systems, 
densely packed cities, nuclear plants, and coastal settlements magnify the risk. It's not just shaking, it's tsunamis, landslides, aftershocks. The Pacific Northwest of the US sits in the crosshairs of a similar threat, the Cascadia subduction zone, overdue for a magnitude 9 plus quake. Japan's early warning system gave citizens a 10 second heads up in 2011. It saved thousands, but not enough. Level 4, we've now entered the elite tier of geological threat, the Himalayan frontal thrust, the North Anatolian fault, the Eastern Himalayan syntaxis. These are the megazones inland, where plates collide but don't dive, they crumple. India is smashing into Asia at a rate of 5 centimeters per year, about as fast as fingernails grow. But this pressure has been building for 80 million years. The result? The Himalayas. And a seismic time bomb. Nepal's 2015 earthquake, M7.8, killed nearly 9,000 people. Kathmandu's temples crumbled, villages vanished. The fault hadn't even ruptured its full length. In Pakistan, 2005's Kashmir quake, magnitude 7.6, left 86,000 dead. This region is ripe for a magnitude 8.5 plus event, possibly 9.0. And it's not just size, it's population. Tens of millions live in poorly reinforced structures. Entire cities sit atop ancient thrust faults. Earthquakes here don't just shake, they lift entire valleys. Geologists have found evidence of megaquakes in this region dating back millennia. Buried soil layers, warped riverbeds, tilted terraces. This is an engine of mountain building and mass death. In the Indo-Gangetic Plain, seismic waves can travel far across soft sediment, amplifying shaking over hundreds of kilometers. Level 5. Now we reach one of the most ominous and overlooked zones, the Cascadia Subduction Zone stretching from Northern California, through Oregon, Washington, and into British Columbia, it's quiet, too quiet. There hasn't been a major rupture here since January 26, 1700. That quake, estimated at M8.7 to 9.2, sent a tsunami across the Pacific. How do we know? Japanese records from that night describe an orphan tsunami, a wave with no local quake. That wave was Cascadia's fingerprint, the zone is fully locked, which means stress is building, and when it breaks, it could produce the worst natural disaster in North American history. The shaking could last over five minutes. Coastal cities like Newport, Coos Bay, Astoria, and even Seattle would be rocked. Tsunamis would arrive in 10 to 15 minutes, barely enough time to evacuate. Infrastructure, ports, bridges, pipelines, many aren't ready. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates over 13,000 deaths in a full margin rupture. The most chilling part? It could happen tomorrow, or 200 years from now, but the clock is ticking, and few people living there truly grasp the scale of what's coming. Sediment cores from the Pacific Northwest reveal a regular pattern of megaquakes, roughly every 300 to 500 years. Level 6. Beneath the calm forests of the Pacific Northwest, a beast breathes in silence. The Cascadia subduction zone stretches from Northern California to British Columbia, where the Juan de Fuca plate grinds beneath the North American plate. But unlike its noisy cousin to the south, the San Andreas, Cascadia doesn't rumble often. That's the problem. It's locked. For over 300 years, stress has been building, quietly and invisibly. But history tells us what happens when that lock breaks. On January 26, 1700, a megaquake estimated around magnitude 9.0, unleashed fury across the region. It sank coastal forests, sent tsunamis racing across the Pacific to Japan, and left behind ghostly evidence, buried trees, native oral histories, and an eerie silence since. Geologists now believe Cascadia could produce one of the most violent earthquakes in North America's future, and because of that silence, it offers little warning. Japanese tsunami records from 1700 confirm the Cascadia event, proving how global interconnectedness reveals local geologic truths. Level 7. Off the coasts of Pakistan and Iran, the Arabian Plate dives beneath the Eurasian Plate in one of Earth's lesser known but dangerously poised subduction zones. It's called Makran, and its surface betrays none of the chaos brewing below. In 1945, 
This zone struck with a magnitude 8.1 earthquake followed by a massive tsunami that killed over 4,000 people along the coasts. But since then, silence. No rumble, no shiver. But the silence isn't peace, it's pressure. The Makran zone has an unusually wide and flat plate interface, perfect conditions for long rupture zones. Recent seismic imaging suggests the zone may be storing more energy than previously thought, with potential for magnitudes exceeding 8.5. And the risk isn't just the ground. Pakistan's coastal megacity, Karachi, sits within range of both seismic shaking and tsunamis from this zone. Makran's shallow angle and sediment-rich interface make it a prime candidate for massive submarine landslides during rupture, raising tsunami risks for the entire northern Indian Ocean. Level 8. Far from the edges of tectonic plates, deep in the American Midwest, lies one of the most misunderstood seismic zones on the planet, New Madrid. In 1811 to 1812, a series of quakes up to magnitude 7.7 .7 shook the Mississippi River so violently it flowed backward. Chimneys collapsed in Cincinnati. Church bells rang in Boston. These weren't aftershocks. They were reminders that not all quakes come from plate boundaries. New Madrid sits atop ancient faults in the North American plate's interior, possibly remnants of a failed continental rift. Today, millions live atop these sleepy plains from Memphis to St. Louis, unaware of the danger beneath. Some scientists debate if New Madrid still poses a megaquake threat, but recent tremors suggest the system isn't dead, just slow. Modern GPS measurements show subtle ground deformation, hinting that tectonic forces remain active even in continental interiors. Level 9. Running from the Andaman Islands down to Indonesia, the Sunda Megathrust is a 5,500-kilometer arc where the Indo-Australian plate plunges beneath Southeast Asia. It has ruptured catastrophically. In 2004, it unleashed a magnitude 9.1 to 9.3 earthquake, one of the largest ever recorded. The seafloor ripped open for 1,600 kilometers, and the resulting tsunami killed over 230,000 people across 14 countries. But that was just one section. The Sunda Megathrust has multiple segments, many still unruptured. In 2005, 2007, and 2010, powerful quakes occurred further southeast, suggesting a domino of tension traveling the arc. The Mentawai segment, in particular, is overdue for a rupture. What makes Sunda terrifying isn't just its power, it's its geography, densely populated coastlines, weak infrastructure, shallow rupture zones. The 2004 event permanently altered Earth's rotation, shortening the day by microseconds and shifting the planet's mass distribution. Level 10. Along Russia's eastern edge, the Pacific Plate dives beneath the Okhotsk Plate, forming the kamchatka kuril Trench. Snowy volcanoes rise from the subduction zone, but beneath lies another threat. This zone has a long record of magnitude 8.5 plus earthquakes. The 1952 Kamchatka quake sent tsunamis as far as Chile and New Zealand. In 2006 and 2007, powerful quakes struck the Kuril Islands, yet large segments remain unbroken, especially near the trench's southern end. Because this region is remote, many underestimate its danger, but submarine cables, shipping lanes, and Pacific-wide tsunami warning systems depend on it. The Kuril Trench has one of the fastest subduction rates in the world, nearly 80 millimeters per year, boosting its capacity for frequent megaquakes. Level 11. Deep in the Southern Ocean, where the South American plate overrides the smaller South Sandwich plate, lies a zone many people have never heard of, and yet it flexes with enormous force. In 2021, this trench produced a complex series of earthquakes, culminating in a magnitude 8.1 tremor. It was the largest quake ever recorded in the South Atlantic. But here's the twist. It wasn't just one rupture. Multiple fault segments broke in a chain reaction, some in compression, others in extension. This kind of complex behavior suggests the trench is dynamically evolving and not as stable as once thought. While the region is largely uninhabited, global satellite infrastructure, military bases, and science stations ring the South Atlantic. Seismologists now monitor this trench as a bellwether for how earthquakes might cascade across multiple faults, like dominoes under pressure. Level 12. Not all megaquakes have history books behind them. Some lie in places science is just beginning to understand. Transition zones between major tectonic boundaries, or quiet gaps, where tremors seem 
seem absent. One such region is the Manila Trench, west of the Philippines. It hasn't produced a known magnitude 9 quake yet, but paleoseismic evidence from undersea landslides and coastal uplift points to massive ancient ruptures. Another is the Hikurangi subduction zone off New Zealand's North Island. It's a mirror to the Sunda megathrust in structure, but it hasn't fully ruptured in modern times. Scientists believe it could generate quakes exceeding magnitude 8.5. And then there's the Mediterranean. From the Hellenic Arc to North Africa's coast, complex subduction systems sit near dense population centers. The real danger of Level 12 isn't where we know megaquakes can happen, it's where they haven't happened yet. Seismic gaps can sometimes signal locked zones storing massive energy, meaning the absence of earthquakes can be more alarming than their presence. The Earth remembers every fracture, every fault, every silence before the shock, and now, so do you. If this journey shifted your perspective, subscribe for more deep dives into the forces that shape our world and threaten to reshape it again, because the next tremor might not be a surprise. It might just be overdue.